This video provides a quick overview of the TrueScan RM handheld Raman analyzer and a few of the accessories for the system. This is the laser aperture. TrueScan uses a 785 nanometer laser at 250 milliwatts of power. TrueScan's laser is at a fixed focal point from the aperture exit to allow penetration past the container's primary packaging. When using the normal nose cone attachment, the focal point from the laser aperture does not change. TrueScan also has another nose cone attachment that is slightly longer with a blunt end. This nose cone also does not change the normal focal point, but because it is longer, the focal point is now at point of contact. This is the tablet holder. The holder is two parts that seal together and ultimately snaps to the front of the instrument just like the other accessories do. Using the spring-loaded grip, you can hold in place tablets and capsules of a variety of sizes to perform finished product ID or quant analysis. This is the vial holder. It accepts typical 4 milliliter vials, and just like both nose cones, the vial holder can easily snap on and off. The TrueScanner M itself has a built-in barcode reader for quick parsing of information and data entry, and it also has a built-in fingerprint reader for quick biometric access to the analyzer for a given user. On the face of the instrument is our impact and shadow resistant color screen and several function buttons. The power button to turn the instrument on, off, or put to sleep. The login, log off button so users may access the instrument throughout their shift. The barcode button that activates the barcode reader to take a scan. The four way directional pad that is used to navigate menus and the on screen keyboard. The enter key that makes menu confirmations or progresses into new menu screens and the cancel button that allows a user to back out of menu screens. On the back of the instrument is the battery and sync access door. With a quick twist, the backing could come off to reveal the battery access door, the data sync port, and the power input port. To securely send data from the instrument to your data archive, the USB Ethernet dongle adapter is used with an Ethernet cable to access your site's network and archive. When the access door is properly closed, the instrument is both air and water tight and is easily decontaminated. The blue impact boot around the instrument is removable as well. When the instrument is at the login screen, press the login button to access the list of approved users on the instrument. The system administrator can enable the strong passwords requirement for enhanced security. There are three user access level types, administrator, developer, and operator, each with specific capabilities. For this demonstration, I will utilize simple passwords for each user type. Now, I will log in as an operator. The operator may run a sample to collect a data record, perform the daily self-test, perform a data sync, and access the tools menu for utilities and settings. You will note that for the operator, the tools menu is limited to seeing information about the system and to change their password. Press the Log Out button and select Yes to log out of the instrument. Logging back in as a developer, we can see that this account level has the same Run, Self-Test, and Sync function of an operator, but with greater tools menu options. A developer may review results that are on the instrument, as well as review what ID methods and signatures are currently on the instrument. The developer can acquire new signatures to develop new methods. The developer may also perform the yearly instrument certification test to verify the analyzer is operating within compendial guidance. Just like the operator, the developer may change their password and also view information about the system. Press the Log Out button and select Yes to log out of the instrument. Logging back in as an administrator, we can see that this account level has the same run, self-test, and sync function of both the operator and developer. The tools menu is also the same as that of the developer, but with one additional function, system settings. The system settings allows the administrator to set up the network connectivity for the analyzer and set either a static IP address or use DHCP. The administrator may also perform network diagnostics to troubleshoot any connectivity issues that might arise from changing site conditions or network updates. The administrator may also set the date and time of the instrument as well as change the language displayed. For now, let's try to identify a sample using a developer account. 
let's start with the daily self-test, or performance qualification. The TrueScan, by default, uses a polystyrene standard to ensure the instrument is suitable for analysis. One may use the barcode reader to enter in the standard's identifier. Once the sample ID is entered, the standard is placed in the vial holder, attached to the analyzer, and the test is started. During spectral acquisition, while the laser is active, you will note the laser aperture warning light located below the built-in safety shield is illuminated. Once the self-test has completed with a pass result, one may begin to acquire sample run data. Select the Run function and press Enter. The method field is highlighted automatically. From here, pressing the Enter button will show the list of validated methods currently on the analyzer in alphabetical order. A faster way to select your method is to use the barcode scanner. Note at the top of the screen that there's a barcode icon. When a field is highlighted and the icon is displayed, that means this field may be entered using the barcode scanner. Scanning the barcode associated with a sample method will pull up that method for immediate use. The batch field is now highlighted and the barcode icon at the top of the screen is still displayed. One may manually enter in a batch ID by pressing the Enter button and selecting New Batch to bring up the on-screen keyboard. A faster way to enter in the batch ID is to use the barcode scanner. Once the batch ID is entered, the sample line is automatically entered using the batch ID and a counter appended to it. This allows a user to immediately determine both batch and scan sample automatically. Once the sample line is filled, Start Run becomes illuminated. For this demonstration, I'll use the vial holder and seat the sample. Press the Enter button to begin the sample analysis. Same as during the self-test, the yellow aperture laser warning will illuminate. The analysis status is noted at the bottom of the screen. Once complete, the result is calculated and the result is shown. Here we see a passing result, and on screen we see the resulting p-value that confirms our passing result with strong confidence. Let's run a second sample of the same material. Select Next, and you'll note the method and batch information is the same, but the sample ID has been increased by 1 to reflect our second sample. Seat the sample and ensure Start Run is highlighted, then press the Enter button to begin analysis. Same run progress screen as before. Once completed, the sample spectra is analyzed and the result is noted. Here we get a fail result, and our p-value of 0 indicates that this is indeed not the correct material. With a little investigation, we indeed see this is not the correct material. If we select the Details option and press Enter, the instrument proposes positive matches for the material's ID with the p-values that show strongly confident match results. Press the Enter button and select View Spectrum to see an overlay of the sample spectra in black with a positive match in blue. If we press the Cancel button to get back to the results screen, the user may enter in a pre-programmed note by the administrator or may enter in one their own. If you note the barcode icon here, you can also use the barcode reader to enter in your own note quickly. Highlight Done and press the Enter key to get back to the results screen with the note appended. Press the Cancel button to return to the main screen. Selecting the Tools menu function and then Review Results allows a developer or administrator to review the data that has been collected. Note here, this is our failing run, with the note attached as well as the positive matches that were found. Perform a data sync to securely remove the data from your instrument for archival. First, connect your TrueScan RM to your network using the USB Ethernet dongle adapter and a suitable Ethernet cable. In this demonstration, I'm using a crossover cable to connect directly to my computer. Once connected, highlight Sync from the main menu and press Enter. Press Enter once again to initiate the transfer of data files to your archive. Once data files migrate over, Run reports, batch reports, sync summaries, and audit logs are created and placed into the archive location of your choosing.
When complete, the instrument status bar will be filled and you will be informed when the data sync is fully completed. Here's an example of a sample run report PDF. On the report, you will see the user who generated the data, as well as a time date stamp for when the run was generated, as well as the instrument's passing performance qualification results. Most importantly is the passing p-value and the overall result of the sample run. A graphical overlay of the sample scan and method signature is displayed for visual inspection. Here's an example of a batch report in CSV format. The batch report is easily parsed by a LIMS or a suitable data management system. For failing results, a discover report is generated that shows the positive matches that were found for a failing run. The sync summary report depicts where the data files were sent for archival upon sync. Finally, the audit log captures the series of events that have occurred on both the instrument and the web admin system interface, which will be discussed at a later time. User actions are recorded between sync events in the order they occur to maintain data compliance. As Thermo Fisher continues to expand within the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical space, there are people who do what you do at your manufacturing and testing facilities, and we're collaborating with them to more fully develop purpose-built applications and hardware to enhance our partnerships with you. We have three web pages listed here, which you can visit for more information, and of course to contact us. Thank you so much for sharing your time.